The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu. The Heart of Art is brought to you by the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. The Heart of Art, scoping the Brussels Valley for the best artists and bringing them to your radio. Howdy, Aylan. Welcome back to the Kami Studios. My name is Hector Nino, and you're listening to The Heart of Art. Today, we have an extra special show planned for you. We will be listening to a conversation that the four-time Grammy Award winner and singer-songwriter Lyle Lovett, class of 79, uh, had with some students in the School of Performance, Visualization, and Fine Arts, as well as some members of the local media groups. And this was back in February 2024. I want to say a big thank you to the School of Performance, Visualization, and Fine Arts for providing this conversation for me so that you all can enjoy it as well. And this is a great conversation where Lyle talks about his own time here at A&M and how much has changed since then and how excited he is for the future of performance here at A&M. So it's a great conversation. I hope you all enjoy. Uh, but just a small note, he was feeling a little under the weather, so his voice is a bit raspy. But bear with me, that does not take away from his great great experience and what the students were able to learn from him. So here is Lyle Lovett. Lyle, just what's it mean to be back here in Aggieland and uh, get to talk with a couple classes here? You know, it's, it, it's, just great to be back on campus. I mean, it's a, I've gotten to visit, you know, over the years many times and, and been fortunate enough to come here and play, uh, perform with, with my band at uh, Rudder Auditorium. And, uh, you know, just to, to be here always feels like coming home to me. To come to College Station uh, and see how it continues to grow. Uh, you know, you get to College Station quicker, quicker than you used to. It, it's it's uh, just spread out more and more, isn't it? And uh, driving in from Caldwell yesterday, uh, gosh, I just just couldn't get over the the Rellis campus and com coming in that way. Uh, to see the growth is is amazing. It's encouraging to ha to be on campus around all these students. I mean, the biggest student population in the country. It's you know what a credit credit to to our school. The school of performance, uh, uh, design, visual arts, I mean, performance didn't, didn't exist when I was in school in the 70s uh, here at A&M. Uh, I mean, there was the Fight in Texas Aggie Band, which is always the, the great thing to behold. But to be able to be, you know, to drop in and to hear about uh, a program for performance, it's uh, really encouraging uh, from my point of view because it was right here at Texas A&M and with my involvement in the uh, in the MSC committees the, the, in the student programs office the basement committee uh, which is now called coffee house uh, as I understand but it was it was right there that I started getting my education uh, in in music so so to, to be able to come back and to see how the growth and, and how the program has, you know, been started and progresses. It's just, it, it, I, well, I just find it all very exciting and uh, really encouraging. Can you tell us what it is you were doing today in, in the classroom? Yeah, you know, uh, the, the, I, was, I, was, I sat in a class uh, last night uh, with, uh, with the professor known simply as Campbell, and it was a 
uh, the, the class was History of Rock. And, and I really just talked about my experience. And, and I was curious, uh, excuse me, curious about, about the students themselves. So I, I you know, I asked, I, I was able to ask the students how many of them were, were in the class just out of general interest, how many of them were musicians, how many of them were performers or wanted to be performers. And, and I really just ended up having a nice discussion with them. What'd you learn from that experience? You know, what I learned that there are, you know, lots, lots of bright young minds who, uh, who are, are already very accomplished and uh, very interested in, in the subject matter and interested in learning how to do things the right way. And uh, you know, when you see that among young people, that's uh, really encouraging. What were your takeaways from, from their responses? You know, they were, uh, my, my takeaway from their responses is that they were being very thoughtful and that they were knowledgeable. Uh, gosh, uh, one, one young man who was, who was also a, a student worker uh, uh, knew his stuff when it came to his audio gear and, you know, mix, mix his shows for the town hall committee. I mean, just seemed like an absolute pro already. And, uh, you know, that, that's a wonderful thing to see. What is it about that experience that you wish you would have had as a student? Well, you know, I, I, I got to have some of that experience. Working with the basement coffee house committee it was a small committee. We were a, a small organization that did small shows, but very consistently. And there were few of us uh, enough that we could work as much as we wanted to. And we were always looking for folks to help with the Friday and Saturday night shows. We were, excuse me. We, we were always looking for folks to help with the Saturday, Friday and Saturday night shows. We had, we had shows every Friday and Saturday night from, from eight until 12 and we programmed 30 minute sets. It was mainly a forum for student performers, but we had enough budget that we were able to bring in professional musicians two or three times a year. And that was always an enlightening experience. So I, I did, even though there wasn't a department like this then in those days, uh, I was able to have a lot of hands-on hands -on experience before I started performing. You know, that was in 1975. 1976, and it was the summer of 1976. Well, it was actually the spring of 1976 that I played my first set in front of an audience at the basement coffee house. But but it was really the the summer of 1976 that I that I got my first job playing, and and uh, and from then from then on, I started performing every week somewhere. You know, I had I had regular gigs here around town, and uh, being able to play consistently. Being able to have that kind of reputation in those days, I mean, it was invaluable. Can yeah. you share what's, what are you doing in your personal life now? You back on tour and uh, you, you released a, an album a couple of years ago. What, what's next for you? Yeah, you know, uh, more, more touring this year, more touring. You know, I'm always writing songs. And, uh, you know, when I, when I get enough songs for my next album, I'll stop and, and record them. But, but uh, I tour, I make a living touring, really. And, and uh, I tour, we, we play, the, the, my band and I, or uh, my, some of my songwriter friends and I, different combinations. I play 100 to 110 dates a year, the last couple of years to make up for uh, the pandemic and not being able to play at all. I played a few more than, than that. Uh, but but uh, things are settling out this year. We'll play about 100 dates. And, and um, you know, I, I, I get to work with some of the best musicians in the history of the music business. And uh, they are always inspiring uh, to me um, to be able, you know, that, and that's, that's what I experienced last night among these students, you know, these, these bright minds. You know, when, you, when you're in a, in a room or on a stage with smart and talented people, they always lift you up. You know, they always make you better. They make you want to be better and uh, inspire you every time. And that's what I get to experience when I step on stage with Russ Kunkel playing drums and Jim Cox playing piano and Leland Sklar playing bass. And with Brad Lely, who's a, the professor of saxophone at the University of North Texas when he plays alto. It's with Charles Rose, who's a 
uh, you know, a, a charter member of the Muscle Shoals Horns, to, to feel their lifetimes of experience applied to my songs is the, the best feeling in the world. There is reportedly a concert that could be coming to Kyle Field this summer with Mr. George Strait, Parker McCollum. What are your thoughts when you hear that A&M is utilizing that, that stadium as, as a place to bring this, this superstar power to that field for country music fans? Well, I, I think, you know, take, to, to accommodate George Strait and Parker McCollum's audience, it takes a great stadium like Kyle Field, with the capacity of Kyle Field. I mean, Kyle Field is just one of the, the greatest stadiums in the world, and uh, it's, I think it's really fitting that, that King George would come here and play. I mean, you know, George is, George is a, such, such a gentleman, and I've worked with George over the years, and he's always been so kind to me. I would love for him to stand in the middle of Kyle Field and hear, hear the Aggies support him. You know. uh, to hear, to, I'd love to see his reaction when he hears 100,000 people, you know, give him a thumbs up and, and whoop all at once. You know, I just would love to see, see his reaction. Just need to get you in there now. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that, 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 that don't come any better than George. And Parker McCollum's having such great success. And that sounds like a wonderful, wonderful bill. Do you have any uh, other stops on your visit here today uh, around campus? You know, I get, to get <clears throat> I, I get to go to a class this afternoon, a class that's uh, uh, it's called Guitar Heroes. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to go and, and to learn something there as well. Uh, but but I'm just enjoying being here on campus and getting to see facilities. I'll get to see uh, uh, the recording studio set up for the department, and and uh, so I'm I'm excited to you know see students who are working and, and hands on w with the technical end of things. Do you have any guitar heroes that you look back on maybe with influential for for you in the development of your career? Oh in music? gosh, you know I I mean I, guitar is the instrument I've always you know, pursued. And, and it's, it's uh, you know, pl playing guitar is, and, uh, well, there's, there's always something to learn. There, there are always, you know, people, that, there's so many great uh, guitarists. I, I was drawn in, the, in my high school years and, and in my first years here at, at A&M working with the basement committee to performers who could support their original songs with simply a guitar, and and so listening in high school to you know get, guitarist songwriters like Jim Croce and John Denver, and 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 then later discovering Texas singer songwriters like Guy Clark and Towns Van Zant and Willis Allen Ramsey, who was who, whose seemingly simple folk songs were full of Delta blues. And to listen to his articulation, those were the kind of guitar players that I, you know, tried. You know, listening to to Michael Murphy, Michael Michael Murphy who became Michael Martin Murphy, who in 1975 did a concert here at G. Raleigh White when his song Wildfire was the top of the charts, and he he came out. He was there here with his band, but he came out for the first hour of that show with just his guitar, and had the entire capacity crowd at G. Raleigh White right in the palm of his hands. I thought, wow, that's that's really something. I remember Dan Fogelberg doing something like that once. Dan Fogelberg, right. Then, you know, I, I got to see Steve, Steve Martin at, at, the, at the height of his touring career was here at A&M. Steve Goodman opened the show for Steve Martin. And to hear, to hear Goodman uh, play those wonderful songs and, and accompany himself, you know, uh, I have lot, lots of guitar heroes for sure. How does that work then when you're in your songwriting mode between the guitar and the thoughts that are in your head and your life experiences, I'm guessing, and, and what else goes into that mixing bowl that... that it, you know, that, well, well, well said, it is kind of a mixing bowl uh, for me. And uh, it's, it's hard for me to separate a lyrical idea from, from the musical part of it. Uh, my songs usually start out with a lyrical kind of thought but it's, uh, you know, what, whatever that lyrical thought might be uh, quickly suggests a musical form. And, and, uh, and in terms of the musical form, 
I just, you know, I hope my guitar playing can handle it, you know. And and uh, fortunately, I I get to get to work with wonderful musicians who can can make my ideas better. But but one thing the musicians I work with do, or musicians like Russ Kunkel and like Leland Sklar, like Dean Parks who plays guitar on my recordings, one thing they do is they listen to my guitar parts for the feel, and and they truly listen, which is intimidating to me, but they really listen to me and support me and don't just take over an arrangement or take over a track. And so when I get to record with great players like that, with Jim Cox on piano and Paul Franklin on steel guitar, even though the arrangements are bigger than, than, than they were when I you know, sat on my couch and made the song up, they still feel like the same song to me. And, and uh, that's, uh, that's, that's something that I appreciate about those musicians. They, they not only can play anything they, that comes into their mind, but they, they're thoughtful people and they listen and they keep my songs specific to me. Well, isn't that the best way for you to be able to communicate what you want to communicate in your songs to the listener? Well, I, you know, I, I think I, I've been lucky in my career and in my life to simply be allowed to be myself. And uh, that, I think that's always, that's always the best way to communicate uh, with, with the listener. All right, you guys, we will be going on a quick break, but do not go anywhere. We will be right back. The Heart of Art is brought to you by the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. Brian Mayer will, will get mad at me if I don't ask. Bobby Gutierrez, we interviewed him after he saw your show at Opus last year, and he brought up the idea of maybe updating this front porch. I don't know whether that idea has, has ever crossed your mind or not, considering the, the resurrection that, that's happened. For, the, for those who have been in downtown Brian in the 70s, they, uh, that that's how that's how I visualize it. Now that the uh, Renaissance, so to speak, and the and the conversion of downtown Brian is taking place. You know, Doctor McLaughlin uh, took took uh, Jay Wright and me downtown last night. We had mm -hmm. and we had we had dinner and and uh, it yeah. Did you it, find the greasy enchiladas? Yeah, we you know we found some great some great tacos. And but but uh, yeah, downtown Brian looks really terrific. And and we stopped by the old uh, Stafford Stafford Opera House. And, and uh, uh, you know, all, all, every, everything that's going on downtown Bryan is, is uh, you know, worth a trip. Stu students that don't make their way down there uh, or up there are, are missing out because there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of fun to be had and there's so much to appreciate. And so much of the history that you can see from the old buildings that, and how they've been preserved at this point. I mean, the, the state of the buildings is you know, much different than it was in the 70s. And, and uh, to see that the community cares enough about the history to, to preserve it uh, the, way, the way Brian is, uh, is uh, once again, it's really encouraging. I mean, it's, there's a lesson, you know, there's so much to learn from, from the area and the history. And, and um, you know, all you have to do is drive, drive that way a little bit. You have such a catalog. How do you decide what you're going to perform on a, on a given? Well, you know, I, I tried it from tour to tour. I try to I try not to play uh, too much of the of the same songs that I played the last time, and you make the show different uh, from time to time. And and uh, it's it's just you know it's there there are some songs that I play every time I play, and I'm just glad people seem to, seem to want to hear them. And and uh, and so it's it really is a lot of times I'm guided by the audience. You know people people shout out songs uh, pretty regularly at my shows and. And uh, you know, I'm always always happy to happy to play them. I'm just, you know, it's uh, 
It's such a blessing to be able to do something in your life that you love to do. It's it's every day, you know, I, I, I get to work on something and, and there, there are aspects of the music business that feel like work, but in the big picture, it's all doing something that I, you know, when I was in school here at Texas A&M, when I was in high school, I was thinking about my studies, playing music was what I did for fun. And to be able to do something in your life that you would do for fun. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. I'm, you know, it's, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunities early on. I'm grateful for the opportunities across my career and especially grateful to the audience, to the people who keep showing up. Uh, that's, you know, it means, it means the world to me. There's still a place for authenticity, isn't there? Well, gosh, they, you know, they, people, you know, over the years, you, you get to know a lot of the folks that support you. And uh, it's uh, that's that's also the you know one of the, one of the, the best parts of it is actually and then and in these these days you know with social media you know people can just write write to you and and um, it, it's uh, and to to be able to to get to know and learn about people who support you over the years is uh, you know that's um, uh, you know it, it, it enriches your life. You know? Consider the classes that you just talked to. This may be a ridiculous question, but with your own kids, how much is music and the arts and performance part of their lives? And do they have uh, an inclination there already? You know, I, I, I think they might. I, I've never wanted to, to uh, force anything on my children. My, my children are six years old and, and uh, they know everything. And, and um, they, they know that I play music. Uh, they haven't been to a show yet. They've been, to, they've been on the bus, we've gone on tour together. They go to sound checks, but the shows usually start around their bedtime, so they haven't been to seen an entire concert. But, but, uh, but they do like music. And and uh, uh, last night, in fact, uh, over the phone, uh, my little boy played on just on his iPad on a keyboard program on his iPad, played the melody to "Happy Birthday." Uh, for me, it's not my birthday, but he, I was. I wished it were, you know, he, 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 he played, I was so proud of him. He picked it out and played it by ear. And, and uh, so, so I, I don't know. I, yeah, I really just want them to do whatever makes them happy, but, but to see their interest in music, they, they really like, uh, uh, I mean, they like, they like to, we sort of try to direct them to Taylor Swift because we know what the words are, but they like, uh, they're really interested in K-pop. And and uh, they they listen. <laughs> their their favorite two K-pop bands are Blackpink, and uh, and an animated band called KDA. And the song the songs are really catchy. But those those are the songs I hear around my house. And 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 I often hear them when they're not listening. If they're playing on the floor, playing with each other, I hear them singing those songs. And so they they retain the melodies. They phonetically pronounce words in Korean. And, and uh, you know, I'm encouraged by that. How, how old are they? Six. S six? Six. Just one? Two. Two? Twins. Two, two. Oh, twins. Twins, yeah, boy, boy and a girl. Okay. Yeah, yeah my, fir my first children ever. I'm a little late to the dad game. Yeah. But, but it, it, it's an experience that uh, has been unlike anything I've ever done and just more wonderful than I could ever have imagined. They, it they, sounds like the timing was right. <laughs> I, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> so you, you, know, think, you think you're going to have to add a K-pop track to your next album? You know, it's, yeah, 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 not much chance of that, but maybe, maybe you know, maybe they'll do one at some point. Good. Well, y'all, thank, 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 thank you, thank you all. Please forgive my voice. Oh, yeah, give it. It's, it's not good for my line of work. Well, I don't know about you, but this interview got me feeling really proud to be an Aggie. And how about we finish the show off with some Texas A&M hymns? We will be starting off with Noble Men of Kyle, arranged by Joe T. Haney.
right now we will be listening to Spirit of Aggieland, composed by Marvin H. Mims and arranged by Joe T. Haney. All right, you guys, that is the end of our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. And a big thank you to the School of Performance, Visualization, and Fine Arts for providing this awesome conversation with Lyle Lovett. I hope you have a great week and make sure you tune in next week. I'm Hector Nino, and you've been listening to The Heart of Art, a production of 90.9 KAMU-FM. You can find all of our shows anytime at kamu.tamu.edu. The Heart of Art is brought to you by the Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts at Texas A&M University, bringing innovative and culturally diverse visual and performing arts programming to Texas A&M University and the Brazos Valley. The Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts fosters the creativity of our community via the transformative power of the arts. The Heart of Art is sponsored in part by the Texas A&M University Art Galleries, which includes the Stark and Forsyth Galleries located inside the MSC. The galleries provide a variety of opportunities to experience art exhibitions, events, and hands-on activities. More information at uart.tamu.edu.